I'm with Ted Osius, the US Ambassador to Vietnam, who's joined us this morning for a great presentation at the Economist Pride and Prejudice Summit around the changes that Vietnam has made quite um, strikingly in the last two years around its new constitution and embracing diversity and a lot of support for yes. diversity. Yep. You presented some really interesting changes. Maybe you can tell us a couple of the key highlights of what they've changed, and then we'll come back to what business now needs to do to catch up. Sure. Uh, well, in 2014, they changed the family law to decriminalize same-sex marriage and uh, eased up uh, some other issues, eased some things for, for LGBT persons. And then in 2015, they followed by changing the civil code and allowing transgender persons to change their identity cards and to get uh, uh, an operation to change their gender. And so these are, these are big steps for Vietnam, which is a, a fairly conservative country in many ways, but on inclusion for LGBT persons uh, is making really, really significant progress. They are probably somewhat surprising they're so far ahead yes. in many other Asian markets. Yes. It seems now that perhaps business has a job to do to catch up to the legislative changes that have taken place. What do you think business can be doing to play a greater role in advancing LGBT equality? Well, some businesses are already really stepping up. And I would mention, for example, IBM, KPMG, and Marriott. Mm -hmm. They all have established affinity groups for their LGBT pers uh, personnel. And what that does is it says, it's okay to be who you are in this company. And I think that's something, that's a, a trend that we'll see picking up in places like Vietnam, where companies realize if you want to attract the best talent, if you want to have the best people in your company and retain the best talent, you need to make it a welcoming place for everybody. And are there any costs to businesses for doing that? Because there are always three parties in this. There's legislation, there's the business yes. community, and there's cultural values. Are there any costs in terms of cultural values going against those in Vietnam for business? Not that I can tell, uh, because they're not being disrespectful of Vietnamese values. But Vietnamese, I think, value fairness and inclusiveness. They also value family very, very much. But what's happening is that family is getting a broader definition. People mm -hmm. are realizing that families come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. P flag, for example, uh, uh, parents and friends of lesbians and gays, is now a legal, active organization in many, many Vietnamese cities, and it's welcomed because it's parents saying, we love our children. Thank you very much, Ted, for your time.